Sea Red. Greetings and salivations, everyone, and welcome to Sea Red's Baby Yoda Territory, home of the child merchandise news, reviews, DIYs, and more. So if you love Baby Yoda as much as my Mandalorian and Dadalorian do, make sure to subscribe to our channel and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss seeing us in the future. For those who don't know me, I'm Fisher, and I am taking over this channel today. Yep, I am, because guys, 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 so excited. The Mandalorian Season 2 premiere was the other day, and I've watched it three times, three already, and I'm here to give you a little bit of a recap and tell you what I thought about it. So if you haven't gotten to watch the episode yet, there will be information about the episode in this video. So guys, spoiler alert! And you might want to wait to watch this until after you've seen it. Unless you want to know. If you want to know, keep watching. So just to give a quick recap on what happened in episode 1 of season 2 of The Mandalorian. Alright guys, so it starts out in a very dark place, very dark, and we see Daddy Mando with, hey, that guy looks just like me. He looks like me. How awesome is it that there is a character on a TV show that looks like me, Fisher? Ah, super excited. So yes, let's go. Let's keep going and watch this whole episode because, little dude, you're cool. So yes dark and scary place. I almost had to close my eyes, but I peeked through my fingers to see what was going to happen. And it looks like Daddy Mando was trying to get information on where he could find another Mandalorian who might have information to get the child back to his actual people. <sighs> it started out just so super intense. But lo and behold, after a little bit of a poomph and a bang and a boom and a oomph, yes, Daddy Mando got the information on where the possible Mandalorian could be. And guys, guys, they're going back to Tatooine! Yay! Tatooine's so fun. It's got two blazing suns and lots and lots of sand. It's like a big old sandbox, which to me just seems really, really fun. So they arrive on Tatooine, and hey, there's that nice lady with the droids. She's always so good to the child. She's really funny, too. She makes me laugh. <laughs> and she tells Daddy Mando where he could possibly find this mysterious other Mandalorian. Because, guys, they've been to Tatooine before, and they've never come across a Mandalorian. So this is an all-new adventure. So the nice, nice, sweet lady with the droids tells them that the Mandalorian is possibly in a place called Mos Pelgo, which isn't on the map anymore. Now, the Mandalorian takes place after Return of the Jedi, so the Empire has been defeated, and the Death Star had gone boom. The second Death Star had gone boom, but yes, Death Star, boom. And this town was just wiped from the map, like it didn't exist. So Mando gets on the speeder bike with the child, and they head on off to find the possible Mandalorian. Once Daddy Mando gets to this mysterious town, he stops in the local watering hole and asks where he can find someone who looks like him. And the guy behind the bar said, You won't have to look far. There he is. And in walks... Another Mandalorian? Could it be? His armor looks really familiar to me. Hmm. So they sit down and they talk and... <gasps> again! <gasps> he removes his mask! And come to find out, he's not a Mandalorian at all. He's just some dude who got Mandalorian armor from the Jawas. Rip off. <laughs> Just kidding. His name is Cobb Vanth, and he explains to the Mandalorian that he got the armor from the Jawas, and Daddy Mando's like, no, that's our armor. You need to give it back. And Cobb Vanth is like, no, I'm keeping it. And Daddy Mandalorian's like, no, you're giving it back. And before they could get into actually some kind of scuffle, the earth begins to shake. Ooh. And I got scared and closed my eyes again and peeked through my fingers. 
Now, what could it be? Is it an earthquake? What, what, what? Oh, no. Oh, cute Banthal. Watch out, watch out, watch out. And <sighs> this big, big, toothy, wormy looking thing comes out of the ground and eats the Bantha. Oh, it was so scary. <sighs> I gasped. And then that cob man, he seems really nice to me. He told the Mandalorian that that is a crate and it has been terrorizing them for years. And he makes a deal with Daddy Mando and he says, Hey, if you can help us get rid of this scary crate dragon thing, then I will give you back the Mandalorian armor. And Daddy Mando agrees. Then the nice man Cobb and Daddy Mando go off on an adventure to try to find the beast and kill it. And while they're on their adventure, Cobb tells Mando how he came across the armor, how their village after the second Death Star went boom, came in and was raided, and everybody in the village was enslaved, but he escaped, and he escaped with some crystals, and he almost passed out, and the Jawas found him, and they traded the crystals for the armor, and then the armor became his kind of like security blanket. So anyone out there who's watched Return of the Jedi, you will see that that armor, that belongs to the bounty hunter Boba Fett. So in Return of the Jedi, Boba Fett was defeated by the good guys and he ended up in the Sarlacc pit. And in the Sarlacc pit, you will slowly digest over a thousand years. So how did his armor get out of the pit? It's just mind blowing. So Cobb now has the armor and him and Daddy Mando continue their journey to find the great dragon and kill it. And on the way, they come across some Tusken Raiders. Ooh, they kind of scare me. Mandalorian said that those sand people used to scare the bejesus out of her when she was a little girl. And I don't blame her. They kind of make me shake. But Mando, who speaks many, many, many languages, he was able to talk to the Tusken Raiders. And they discovered that they too want to kill the Krayt Dragon. So... Cobb and Daddy Mando and the Tusken Raiders make a deal to team up and they go off to kill the dragon, which doesn't go really well at first. And then they enlist the help of the people of Mos Pelgo and they all come together and they try to defeat the Krayt Dragon. He's a really scary dude. He lives in an abandoned Sarlacc pit. And the only reason a Sarlacc will abandon its pit is if the Krayt Dragon eats it. <sighs> eats it. Could you imagine? Blah. Yucky. I'll stick the frogs. So they think they've defeated the crate dragon, but it's still alive. And then Mando does something super duper spectacular and he sacrifices himself. But it's okay. He's got a way out. And next thing you know, he's pew, flying out of the little crate dragon's belly. And then he Boom! Blows up the bombs that he put in its belly. <laughs> and yay! Ding dong! The great dragon is dead. And all is well. So Daddy Mando and the child take off on the speeder bike in search of the child's true family. <sighs> what a first episode, guys. Oh, and I forgot. At the very, very end, guys, someone is watching them drive away. And when that man turns, it's, it's, it's Boba Fett. Guys, ah, again, how the heck did he get out of that Sarlacc belly? Ah, oh, super, super exciting, and what a great, great season premiere. I was so excited and so happy to see it. And guys, instead of 30 minutes long, it was 54 minutes long, so it was like, twice the Mandalorian in one episode. Ah, it was so great. Have you guys watched it yet? Are you excited for the rest of the season? I don't know. Come on, guys. Let's chat about it in the comments. My, my only one complaint about the whole episode is that Mandalorian told me that there was this Timmy Elephant guy in it, and I didn't see an elephant at all. I thought she meant the Banthas, but we all know that Banthas are like woolly mammoth type things, but I didn't see any elephants at all. So that made me sad. <laughs> but anyways, 
guys, I really hope that you liked my little review. If you want to keep seeing them, make sure to subscribe to our channel and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss seeing us in the future. And I guess there's only one thing left to say. We'll see you later.